Welcome, folks, to the show that proudly declared we will not go quietly into the night. The views and opinions of this podcast do not represent official sources. Because of the extreme amount of bass, listener's discretion is advised. <laughs> This show has been brought to you in part by Two Black Labs Audio. You are listening to A Week in Geekdom. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom. I'm your host, Giovanni Menendez, and yes, welcome back, folks. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platform. You can like and subscribe to our videos here at youtube.com slash a week in geekdom or e- or write to our email that's a week in geekdom at gmail.com and let us know what you think of the show so uh it's been another week and uh as as usual our co-hosts are not here that's a norm at a week in geekdom they're busy playing destiny on their ps4s and their crazy internet connections and such but here we are to deliver our opinions on a week's worth of information. In video game land, first and foremost, I just want to call out all the all, all the gamers out there that wanted to get their hands on a Super Smash Bros. 3DS demo with the codes that Nintendo was giving out. We didn't get ours. We didn't bitch and moan about it. But seriously, I read some comments. People were really desperate to get a demo that is going to be released eventually for everybody. And the game itself is a couple weeks away. So really, you know, there's no need for this ruckus for a freaking demo. Jesus. But yes, Super Smash Bros. looks amazing. I'm not sure how it will play on a 3DS. Uh, uh, you'll probably already know by now. Speaking of Nintendo, last week we completely forgot to talk about the new Mega Pokemon that are coming out on Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. It's a norm here. We always forget the Megas. Uh, yeah, Mega Gallade, uh, Camerot, and Sharpedo. Uh, all, well, except for Gallade, uh, the other two were really uh, rumored heavily that they were going to show up. And I guess Galate too, if you already had Mega Gardevoir. It was just a matter of time. Uh, yeah, I just... a lot. I've seen a lot of hate towards uh, all the Mega Pokemon. I'm not sure why. It's just an option. If you don't want the Mega Pokemon, just don't get them. And don't play the game. It's that simple, folks. Uh, aside from that, we do have a Destiny review coming up. If uh, Brian gets here and can record it probably happen but yes we do have a destiny review for you as i mentioned on the last episode last week i didn't i cannot play this game i'm sorry one uh cable companies like uh liberty and uh choice in puerto rico and i will tag them so they will know have crappy service and do not want to serve my area because they suck and that's uh pretty much about it uh you can go back to the other episode and listen to my explanation as to why they suck so moving on to more interesting things uh, yes we will have a review on that and uh, let's move on to comic book stuff in comic book news I finally read the first issue for death of Wolverine it's not that bad I was expecting something completely different I'm interested in why uh, they want to have Wolverine killed well then again we already kind of know why they would want him dead but uh, yeah, uh, McDivin's art, man, that was just something else. He is a true artist. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm interested to see where it goes from here. I still need to pick up issue two and then, you know, get in line with the rest of us, with the rest of you, and read uh, issues three and four. But yeah, it's it's an interesting story and it, it has a solid creative team. Charles Soule is just hitting it on all cylinders, man. So many titles and such good quality on almost every single one of them. Also, we read Original Sin and yeah, we're gonna do a review of that. Next up in TV land, uh, we really wanted to talk about a couple things. 
first and foremost, and I'm reading the list off here right now. Uh, the new season for Ultimate Spider-Man came out, Web Warriors. Of course, this is taking some inspiration out of Spider-Verse, I guess. A multiple uh, army of Spider-Men, if you will, gracing us on the TV screen. We've seen a couple episodes, and the problems that are plaguing this series from day one are still there. I am not a particular fan of all the constant uh, fourth wall breaking and all those sight gags and all that stuff. To me, that's really odd coming from Spider-Man. I would have, you know, if it's another character, then I don't know, maybe. It's a pretty cool series if you give it a shot. The voice acting is superb. I wholeheartedly agree with a couple of you on the internet, and Drake Bell just kills it as Ultimate Peter. Uh, yeah, it's just same problems from day one that just keep messing up the show in and it, of itself. And even the animation is sometimes wonky, not to mention all these ridiculous or villain origins that have been remixed, remastered or whatever, like uh, Rhino, Scorpion, Sandman, they have some horrible origin stories here that I am not a fan of, especially Scorpion, my favorite spider villain. Yes, the one nobody likes, I like it. Uh, but yeah, Ultimate, Ultimate Spider-Man Scorpion just sucks. It's a shame. He looks badass, but he sucks. Ugh. Next up in TV news, uh, DC is practically gonna own the superhero TV market, if you will. And there are rumors, lovely rumors, that uh, TNT and DC are supposedly uh, going to produce a pilot for the Titans. The Titans, uh, I, 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 I don't know what version they're going to use. I presume it's going to be the later run where it was just the Titans. It could work, and at the same time it could be a horrible idea. Let's just see how it goes. But yes, uh, Nightwing and Raven, for s the longest of time, we've heard rumors that they've been wanting to do series with them. And I just think if you've already done super speed with uh, The Flash in the new CW series, then you've got no problem introducing Wally West or any other type of Flash that you want to do. And the same goes with Raven and all that stuff. You already, you're doing Constantine on NBC. You already, you're tackling the paranormal side of DC Comics and all that stuff. I really don't see a problem with uh, Raven uh, doing her magic and tele teleportation and transportation and all that stuff that she does. Uh, so yeah, I think I think it's an interesting idea, an inter interesting concept for a live action show. Jeff Jones tweeted about it that it's in the works. They just, they just have to find that right balance of what they're really aiming for. And by that I mean, do you want to go for an older, mature cast? Or do you want to get that young vibe that every that the kids know from the cartoons and the comic books or the Teen Titans or Young Justice? Or yeah, if you want to go the down and gritty path with an older team. So yeah, Teen Titans, am I excited? Hell yes, the Teen Titans are awesome. They're my favorite team out of uh, DC. So it'll be interesting. We'll keep you posted on what we think. And finally, in uh, movie news, something that we skipped a couple weeks ago, but we wanted to talk about it now. Uh, there's this fabled rumor that we someday might get to see a live action adaptation out of Ghost in the Shell. The movie has been in development hell for ages. DreamWorks has the properties, it's the property. It has done nothing with it, and uh, yeah, we finally learned a bit of news about it. And supposedly, Margaret Robbie, the Australian actress, which did a wonderful job on The Wolf of Wall Street, is supposedly going to play uh, Major Kusanagi. H how do I even tackle the subject? And I guess this is where I spend most of the time on the episode ranting about things, I guess. But uh, the idea of a Ghost in the Shell movie, first and foremost, we don't need it. If you've seen the movies, if you've watched the, the TV series, Standalone Complex and Second Gig, 
you will know that really there's absolutely no need to have this. Uh, the series is perfect as it is. I really don't think it needs an adaptation, an hour and a half, two hour movie based on Ghost in the Show. Would it be cool to see? Probably, yes, I would probably uh, geek out watching that movie. But um, I, I, I don't know. In, in a series that is so emblematic when it comes to the uh, cyberpunk and the futuristic side of technology and theories and just about like from existentialism to nihilism to whatever ism you want to talk about that in a nutshell is ghost in the show it's a series that examines uh, the human condition throughout uh, its integration with technology and all that stuff at least in my opinion so I don't think a two-hour movie is sufficient to examine this. I don't know what what they would do with an actual uh, live-action movie. I'm thinking it would. I think it would look badass. You know, we've come to the point where we could make so many pretty things happen on the li on the big screen. But a lot of people were complaining. Uh, even if Margaret is an uh, Australian actress. Uh, people were basically upset, and this goes, Sarkin's back to our Human Torch debate here at A Week in Geekdom. Uh, when you cast somebody that's not like the original character, keep in mind, and I'm not against uh, or pro the casting choice, keep in mind that uh, Major, uh, Major Kusanagi, Motoko, she inhabits diff she's inhabited different bodies and different exoskeletons in the shows and the different versions of the series that it's possible that she would look different but I get the concerns that people want an authentic Japanese movie because this, the fact is the show lives and breathes Japanese elements and how Japan deals with these subjects of terrorism and uh, you know government and technolo technological advancements if you will and yes while the rest of the world also plays that game this show is so Japanese at its core this manga series it's so legendary that I really have a hard time believing that a two-hour movie will capture that essence and at the same time portray the characters as, do them justice or at least remotely, you know, uh, capture the essence, if you will, I guess. I'm repeating myself. But, uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is this movie might be in danger of becoming an EM Flux of the world. And by that, I mean, even if the show, I'm talking about EM Flux, may not have been, like, groundbreaking, the movie basically took the concept and just made a huge eye candy movie out of it. And I fear that's what's going to happen with this. Um, every Everybody has a chance to play the characters. If, if, if they want to do this movie and you want to go see it, then go see it. But if you you are so adamant about uh, rejecting uh, a live a action adaptation of the Ghost in the Shell properties, don't watch it. It's as simple as that. Um, it's a little exhausting seeing so much hatred for casting choices and movie choices and all these choices that people are uh, making. It's just a little uh, weird, in my opinion. So yeah, Ghost in the Shell live action. I don't know how to feel about that. I guess as more news develops, I guess I'll have some concrete uh, thoughts on it. So yeah, lastly, what we wanted to talk to you guys about uh, on this episode this week. The new Mockingjay trailer is out. It looks amazing. I'm really interested in seeing the progression of the story. Their whole world changed with that second movie. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but uh, man, uh, the things that happened in that movie, and now in that third one, the trailer looks amazing. And yeah. Way to go, Katniss. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to share with you uh, whenever we get some cool stuff. The purchase of the week, of course, Godzilla out on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital HD. Well, that actually came out a few weeks ago on iTunes and stuff. But uh, yeah, King Kaiju, baby. 
There you go. It's actually a fun movie. You can check out our, our review here at A Week in Geekdom. Um, a lot of people were criticizing it. Yes, it's a slow burn. I think it was deliberate. I don't mind. Yes, I would have liked more battles, but it's about refinement, really. It's the first time we're doing a Godzilla on this scale, and um, all I gotta say is just wait for that second one. So yes, folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another exciting episode in the life of a week in geekdom. I have been your host, and I think we'll see you next week. Stay tuned, because we're probably going to do some crazy stuff between here and the end of 2014. We'll probably try and debut something. We've had some projects in the limbo, so see how that goes. But yes, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, yeah, we will see all of you next week. <laughs>